This tutorial is part of my course on Udemy. Check out the description for more info. Hey there, in this lecture we'll be working on collisions. For testing the collisions, we'll be making an object called O collision. So that object should basically stop the player's movement. So let's begin. First of all, I'll open as player idle. Here we need to modify the collision mask of the player. So I'll click here to open the collision mask menu. Now you can see the mask or the hitbox of the player. It's the area that collides with other objects. Now because of the perspective of our game, which is top down, we need to reduce the mask to the player's legs. So only that part should be able to collide. So in the collision mask menu, I'll change the mode to manual. And now you can modify the mask. So I'll make it cover the legs only. Now we need to make sure that only this mask is used, no matter which sprite the player is using. So I'll open our player. Now you can apply a mask to the object here and only that mask will be used for the object. Currently though, the mask is taken from the stance sprite which you know changes as you move. So I'll set it to use the mask of S player idle only. Now I'll go to sprites and create a new one. I'll name it as collision. Here I'll click on edit image and make a simple box. Now back in the sprite, I'll open the collision mask menu. I'll change the mode to manual. Now I'll reduce the mask to only the ground area. Now in the resources, I'll right click on objects. I'll click on add group. Groups can be used to organize objects. So this one will be used for world objects. And so I've named it as such. Now I'll right click on the group and create an object inside it. I'll name it O collision. I'll assign the sprite here. And now I'll open the game room. Here I'll place a couple instances of O collision. If you want, you can turn off the grid from here. So then you can place them wherever you want. Now we're gonna work on the collision code. So I'll open O player. I'll go to the step event. Now here we are setting the move x and move y variables. So these variables store how much the player wants to move. And here the movement is applied to the instance. So the collisions will be handled here after the movement is calculated but before it is applied. But before adding code here, we need to make a script for checking collisions. So if we ever want to expand our collision checking, for example by adding tiles, we can do it in the script. So I'll go ahead and make a new script. I'll name it collision. Now a script is basically a custom function. So you can pass in some arguments and get a return value. So you get to write what happens inside this function and the arguments it takes. So here I'll add this. Now these are the arguments that the script takes. So it needs the x and the y where the collisions need to be checked. Now the arguments can be accessed using the argument variables. Here I'm using the place meeting function to check for object collisions. These are the coordinates where the collisions will be checked. So the x and the y are taken from the arguments. And we are checking for collisions with the object or collision. Now the place meeting function is going to return either true or false based on whether a collision was found. And then the script is going to return the same value. So now we can use this script to check for collisions. So I'll go back to the player step event. Now right here I'll add the collision code. The collisions are handled separately on the x and the y axis. Here we have one condition using the collision script. Now these are the x and y coordinates where we'll be checking for collisions. So for the x we have x plus move x and for the y we simply have y. So it checks if there is a collision where the player is about to move horizontally. If a collision is found, move x is set to 0. So the player stops moving on the x axis. Now here it checks for a collision on the y axis. So here move y is added to the y and the x is simply x. So if a collision is found on the y axis, move y will be set to 0. So let's run the game and test the collisions. And they are working. The boxes stop the player from moving. 
but the collisions aren't complete yet. So to demonstrate what we need, I'll close the game and open the player's create event. I'll change the player's move speed to 5. And now I'll run the game. Now of course the player moves faster. Now whenever the player collides with the box, there is a gap between them. And there's the gap. And of course, there should be no gap. So when a collision is found, we'll have to move the player towards the collision pixel by pixel so that there is no gap left. So let's go back to the player step event. Inside the block for the X collisions, I'll add this. This runs a while loop. So the loop will keep on running as long as this condition is true. And the condition checks if there is a collision directly next to the player where it is moving. So here it gets the sign of the move x value to add to the x. The sign function returns 1 if the value is positive and minus 1 if the value is negative. Now here we have the exclamation sign. So we are checking if a collision is not found. So in that case the player should move a pixel in that direction. So it gets the sign of move x and adds it to the x. So this way the player will move pixel by pixel until a collision is found and the loop breaks. Then move x is set to 0 so that the player stops. Now we can do the same for the y axis. So I'll add this here. As you can see it's the same logic but on the y axis. So the collisions are checked on the y axis with the sign of move y and it moves on the y axis as well. Now let's run the game and test the new code. And now when you collide with a box, there will be no gap. So the while loops are doing their jobs. Now back in the play object, make sure you reset the move speed to 1. Now in the game, you'll notice that the player appears below the box. So we'll work on that in the next lecture. Thanks a lot for watching. If you're interested in the course, check out the description. Make sure you subscribe for more tutorials and I'll see you in the next one.